Dress all the way back to from 1939, Anna, um, and stained with sweat. Does that make it somehow more valuable? I wouldn't say more valuable. I think it's it's not so much about the dress, is it? It's what it symbolises and what it stands for. You know, this is a film that has, has caused great affection in people from particularly you know their childhood days, and often people want to own something that reminds them of their childhood. And in this case, it resembles innocence. You know, it represents escape. It represents an iconic film star as well. So it's very much what it represents. The thing about dresses, isn't there, in movies, that seems to make them go for a lot more than other items. The most expensive item of movie memorabilia uh, clothing ever was Marilyn Monroe's ivory pleated subway dress from the 1955 movie The Seven Year Rich. It's got $5.6 million, what well, about four million, three and a half, four million quid at auction in California in 2011. I mean, I haven't seen this film, but even I know this scene. It is well, it's iconic as well. Exactly. I think you've hit on it there. It's not just about the film. It's become bigger than the film. It's been in postcards. It's been in art. It's been mocked in, you know, TV shows. Um, everyone knows that image, whether or not they've seen the film. And, of course, a fashion icon wore that. Marilyn Monroe wore it. So it takes on great cultural significance. Another great one is Audrey Hepburn's Ascot dress from My Fair Lady. That fetched $3.7 million. There's a theme developing here, like I say. It seems to be dresses, dresses. that are the most iconic items in movie history. It's interesting, isn't it? You know, kind of, you know, hats and, you know, Indiana Jones' fedora have, do have done quite well. But, yeah, dresses do seem to be the one that they're the show-stopping sort of moment of glamour, aren't they? And they remind you of classic Hollywood. Well, you say that, but a 1963 Volkswagen Beetle using Herbie Goes to Monte Carlo, I have seen that one, by the way, sold for $86,500 in the same sale as Judy Garland's dress. And there is Herbie, the love bug himself, overtaking several, well, faster cars, <laughs> I would have thought, uh, back in that film. Um, that's not bad for a car, is it? 86 Not and a half bad. Grand? I guess you can still use that as well as, as a practical purpose. Yeah. Yes, yeah. quite, uh, despite the, the troubles that VW have had recently. <laughs> Are studios wise to this kind of thing now? I mean, do they know that if this film is a big one, they're going to keep the props? Are they keeping the the sort of cells from Frozen locked away, ready for when the girls and boys now have grown up and they want to buy that kind of stuff. They've got any sense they are. I mean, yeah. of course, there's a huge market now in movie props, online especially. And, you know, ever since 1970, MGM decided to do a big sale and discovered, really, that, you know, there was a market for these kind of things, mm. and it's just exploded since then.